evening all, and welcome to Season 3 of Kerbalism. Yes, uh, 1.6 has finally been released by N70, and uh, after doing a bit of testing in beta, it seems to work absolutely fine, so I'm happy to finally get this going and uh, see what we can do. Um, I have also done a little bit of testing with it, so I know everything's hopefully going to be good. Um, so, right, let's get straight into it, shall we? Um, I'm going to play on moderate difficulty because that turns off the missing crews and uh, the other bits and pieces here. And I'm also going to turn on require signals for control. So our probes, if they go out of range, die on us. So that makes sense there. Um, that is all other mods I have installed. Um, I think I'm kind of happy with that as it is. Okay, we'll accept that. Um, Cabalism Season 3. Oh, no pounds went. There we go. Right. So, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, right. So, um, Extra Planetary Launch Pads is the only other mod that I think I've re-added since the video I did last time. Uh, there may be one or two other ones. I can't exactly remember, but I think that's the only one there. Um, I have not used Extra Planetary Launch Pads in its official state for a very, very long time. So that's going to be fun to get to. Um, I've always used sort of simple instructions or something, which is much easier, but that's a bit more complicated. Um, I do also have many other mods uh, installed. I will have a list to that all in the description below. So you can see that, as well as a link to um, the CCAM files. You can add it all and my profile because I have changed a fair bit on the profile um, as I normally do. You've probably seen if you've seen season one or two, I've changed the profile a fair bit. Uh, the biggest changes I've done are, of course, everything has been changed over from normal resource to the liquid version of it. So instead of uh, oxygen and nitrogen, for instance, we get liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen. Uh, my reason for doing that is because Kerbalism now uses the community resource pack for its resources, which is a brilliant mod. But um, I think I've said before, it doesn't quite add up. When you take water, which is two hydrogen and one oxygen, and split them, the weight of the two hydrogen and the one oxygen together does not become the weight of water. Whereas if you take the liquid versions of them, it kind of does. So that works. Of course, everything's been rebalanced around that. By default, they have almost five days of food and water. Um, they have um, almost seven days of oxygen because they can last a lot longer without food or water than they can without oxygen. Um, and nitrogen is supposed to be the same as well, but obviously this pod does not have a um, pressure control on it. It's only got a scrubber. Uh, that's another little change I've done there. Every pod gets one slot per Kerbal that sits in it. So if you have a three slot pod, it will have three slots. So that just made sense in my head. Um, anyway, uh, right, let's um, let's get going with the science, shall we? Because that's how it always starts. So uh, put on the science thing there. And I don't think we've got anything else to start with. Nope. Okay. Um, let's go with that, shall we? So, starting off every series as we always do, um, I do have x installed, which is a fantastic mod. It makes life so much easier to be able to just click the buttons there and job done. Um, and EVA there. Right, and let's see, can we... Um, we'll do a runner over to the actual KSC itself. Now, some things I don't have installed that I have done before with, um, I've got no real mega parts packs. Um, extra Panager Launch Pad does add a lot of containers and bits and pieces to the um, parts list, but that's just for that there. The only parts I actually do have are procedural tanks and B9 procedural wings. That's just going to make life easier, I feel. Um, just it's going to be simpler to um have one tank in the core of a ship rather than requiring several and that's an awfully long way down there but there we go we get a tiny bit more science um and run back to the pod uh usually i would use a mod called ki um which just grabs all the science from everywhere around the ksc but um but let's not go with that this time i'm gonna try and do it manually so we will build a rotor at some point and visit all the different ksc uh, biomes because each one of these buildings is a separate biome and uh, I think there's also one over there by the monolith. So, um, 
Yeah. And back in the pod we go. Oh, apparently we are landed at Turban Shores now. That's interesting. Is that because I bashed the pod and it moved? Well, I won't say no to free science. Um, okay, so, and we cover that. And there we go, a grand total of seven science. Not really a great deal, but um, well, it's gonna be slow going to start with because that's just the nature of Kerbal Space Program early on. And of course we can do exactly the same, but over in the hangar, there's a new switch editor button up here. I think that's 1.4 built in. Um, and uh, we can just launch this craft uh, way up in the sky. And uh, yeah, take it straight over to the runway, which makes life a lot easier. So, go and crew report. Um, EVA out. Land at the Kerbin Shores. Yep, we want that one. Um, let's drop that in there. And again, we'll run off the runway. Um, not that I think this one's going to actually count, because I think the external grass is all the same. Yes, yes it is. Okay, so Jeb, you can head back to the pod and uh, we shall recover you. And then spend the glorious science you have just gained. Okay, so 12 science and 22,000 funds. Let's see here. Um, right, well, let's just unlock the basic two. Um, of course, uh, because I'm playing on moderate difficulty, I do have to actually physically unlock the bits and pieces here. Um, I've got to actually buy them. So it's going to be interesting money-wise, I feel. Um, so there we go, we're already down to 4,200, which isn't great. But uh, we can, of course, um, take the missions to launch our first vessel and escape the atmosphere. I don't have any contract mods at all. Um, I'm purely on the stock um, contract system, so we're going to see how that goes. With the contract pack that you can download, essentially you could get one of the contracts for tourism, which takes people up to an asteroid. And once you've got an asteroid in orbit, that lets you just print money, basically. It gives you an almost unlimited supply of money because it's so easy to get to an asteroid that's in orbit. Um, stay there for a few days and uh, then obviously you come back and uh, you're rich. I thought, I'm not going to go with that one this time. I'm going to make it struggle a bit more. Um, I hope I'm not going to regret that. But uh, we will see. Okay, so let's just build a little rocket here. Um, obviously, procedural tanks I have. I don't think they can do a great deal yet. Uh, nope, obviously... They change size as you upgrade your um, your tech tree. So, uh, well, I might as well go with that one because it's, uh, just make it plain white. Um, it's the biggest tank I kind of have. Okay, and engine-wise, um, oh, actually, do you know what? No, nope, we will just go with a solid rocket booster, a little flea. Why not? Why not? Um, don't think there's anything else we really need. I don't particularly think we need any fins on this um, or communication. Do, do, do. Nope, I think that's about it. Okay. So, Jebediah Kerman, are you ready? Take a temperature scan. Are you ready to become the first Kerbal to leave the surface of Kerbin? You won't be going very far. Let's be honest with you. Um, I'm not really sure which direction I want to go. Um, I think just out to sea. That's probably the best way. Out towards the moon. So, um, doo -doo -doo. I see it's on. Engines to full. Not that it matters for a solid rocket booster, but I will. And uh, away you go, Jim. And of course, we have lots and lots and lots of research on the way. Collect all those. And we're going to get to a moderate 
sort of seven thousand, six thousand. Not too bad at all, really. Now we are flying over Kerbin's water. Let's get a crew report there. Six thousand. Not bad at all. Not bad for our first flight. And uh, then it's just a case of uh, dumping that booster away. And falling down nice and gently into the water. And splash down. Loads more science to be had. Okay, and uh, obviously an EVA report. Um, smash down at Kerbin's water. Or that one, and then uh, nope, swimming is exactly the same. Okay, so oh, grab onto that and board, and uh, recover the vessel. And there we go, a uh, lovely 42 science gain. Um, isn't it annoying those messages are coming up in front of there? Gotta say that. Maybe I'm just being a bit too quick for it. Uh, up to 87,000 funds, that's awesome. Um, right, so, uh, do go back into our research and development and see what else we can get. Obviously, it's slow going early on. Um, as it is with any Kerbal series, you know, and any time you restart the game, it does take a little while to get going. Um, right, let's research that. Um, I think we'll just we'll, we'll, we'll start off evenly across the board. Um, oh, we don't have enough science for the big engines. That's a shame. I could probably do with. Though we've got the swivel, haven't we? Yeah, yeah that's okay. That's fine. Right. Um, we will purchase that one and um, yeah we can purchase that one as well yep why not okay so we do have some new wonderful angled science things um, let's go back to the runway obviously you have to do the uh, science in uh, on both the runway and the launch pad to get everything from it. So, uh, oh, what am I doing? Uh, zoom in. Do temperature, radiation, uh, barometer. Uh, in fact, in fact, hold on a moment there. Um, don't save that. If I was to open that ship I just made, it goes way up there. I do. I guess in my controls here. Uh, right, yeah, there we go, got that. Uh, we add a barometer to it. There we go. Um, and I don't think there was anything else we unlocked, was there? Nothing in particular. Um, obviously, I do have the small pressure tank now. And uh, like I said, this allows for um, nickel oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, uh, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and water. Water is one thing I've added to the external tanks. They're all storing liquid versions of chemicals, so it just makes sense to add water, I thought. So I did. There we go. Um, and obviously the supply containers are the old supply containers. They had food and water as well. Um, yeah. Okay. So... Digital liquid cone tank. Oh, awesome. Okay, um, we're going to go with that. Now, I will say, um, the procedural solid rocket boosters, um, I have found a bug with them, um, which I can show you. I can show you right now, in fact. Let's let's do that. Um, I need to raise that up. Um, now, the issue I found is that when you just put them on there and uh, launch with them, uh, as you can see, the engine bell ends up up here and turns red. And I don't know why. Um, and if you are to launch the rocket there, that's where the thrust would come from. So you would spin out of control. I don't know why it does that. It's confusing as hell to me. Um, 
but it does so right now the solid rocket boosters are just um bugged and you can't use them so uh yeah avoid them just go with the stock ones um, and speaking of the stock ones if i upgrade to the larger booster i do believe that can actually allow me to escape the atmosphere if i pretty much go straight up so we're going to give that a go um and valentina is going to be our first pilot we'll see if we can get to space um Did I get any? I do have some heat shields. I'm not sure if I need a heat shield, if I'm honest with you. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to put one on. I don't think I do. Not for re-entering, just as is. Um, I'm going straight up and coming down again. I don't think I do, but... We're going to go with that. Okay. Um, so, yeah. We will just point straight up in the air. I think. Um, may... I want to land over there somewhere, really. But I think we can do that by coming down using air, the aerodynamic. So, uh, Valentina, are you ready to set some new height records? Away you go. We'll lean ever so slightly that way just so I make sure we're heading that kind of direction. Now, pressure scan above KSC. Twenty, thirty, forty. Um no, it's not quite enough to leave the atmosphere. That's a shame. But we will get some lovely high records here. We now we are flying high, so we can get all the experimentations. Awesome source. Record all that data. That is fantastic. But um, yeah, we won't quite make it to space today. Um, and apparently we're going to come down over there, even though I'm saying to lean that way. I don't think that projection is correct. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's um, speed up time and see what happens. Speaking of speeding up time, uh, I do have persistent rotation installed. That's this blue icon here. Um, that means that when we're in orbit, not so much in the atmosphere. Um, if I try and speed up time to stop a vessel from spinning, say, for docking purposes or anything, it won't. It'll carry on spinning. And um, that I'm kind of fine with. Um, I, I think I prefer that because it does feel a little cheaty to um, always have uh, the ability to just stop the craft spinning no matter what you're doing. Because you run out of electric charge or RCS or something, and then, yeah, it's a bit a bit cheesy. But um, anyway, uh, we are coming down nice and near. Didn't need the heat shield at all. But as I said, it's rather be safe than sorry. Um, I think just basically putting two solid rocket boosters on there would be enough to uh, blow me down. Not slow me down, sorry. Would have been enough to get me into um, out of the atmosphere. What I was trying to say there. Um, now you may notice I leave it a little late for drop it for firing the parachutes off. Um, that's purely just because it takes a long time to come down uh, with the parachute open. So I leave it to the last sort of moment to do it. So it this takes less time to, to do. They do open pretty late though. I have noticed that the parachutes do open pretty late. But for one, they don't. Um, explode on me it's fine and a touch down just like that loads more science that's what we need um, yeah there is a small bug in Kerbalism's naming system there when you collect the mystery goo it comes up with a, 
a broken name. Um, okay, so EVA. Um, do land at Kerbin's Grasslands. We can't take any uh, surface samples yet. We don't have the technology to pick up dirt. And um, yeah, recover that. And uh, we are happy. I'm very confused by that warning. Every time I seem to recover a vessel, it goes warning it can't talk to it and then it can talk to it again. Sure, that doesn't matter because I'm recovering the vessel, but um, yeah. Right. Um, so we have money, we have bits of pieces. Valentina got some bits of um, some experience there. Um, one thing I do want to do that I think I forgot. Um, do. No names of mouse over no, that is turned on. Okay. Um, this is an object enhancement. It basically don't know if it actually works in this view here. Uh, can't see any. But when when you plan, uh, as you've seen before in my previous series, you can mouse over objects in the sky, not necessarily the moon, but a Minmus or Luna was around, and it can tell you what planets were where. And um, I just like that. I like being able to see them and being able to. We'll just go, ah, who's joining us in the sky today? I don't think it works in this view. So I'll be honest with you, I can't say I've ever seen the trees in this view before either. But, um, a happy addition. Uh, anyway, right. So, we have wonderful new bits of science to unlock. Okay. Um, I'm going to start at the... Oh, no, we'll do that one. Do that one first, sorry. And then uh, we will purchase that. I'm going to start down here because I want the science. Um, I do obviously have community resource tree installed, as you can see, uh, with the hide the empty tech tree node, so we're not going to be getting nodes that are pointless. Um, that's why this tree looks slightly different to what you may be used to. But um, I prefer this one. When, when adding mods to a game, the community resource tree just makes it spread out better rather than cramming them all into one place. Um, and I think it does balance the research as well. So rather than it being quite steep, you can get little pieces here and there. Um, the only thing I am confused about is that you can't buy individual parts. Or can you? Yes, you can. Okay. I've just noticed that there. Um, I did think you had to buy all the parts in one go. But if you just want something specific in here, uh, say for instance, I don't have much money, so maybe I just want to get the Science Junior, you can right click to lock this window. Um, which didn't actually work. I right click to lock it whilst I mouse over it, and then purchase the one down here. Um, that may be something that a lot of you know already, but um, I didn't. I didn't know you could do that. Okay. Uh, right. So uh, anyway, I do want to buy all of these anyway. I was just um, making a point there. Um, and with this, we do get a scanner. We could look at building a probe, although maybe not yet. I think I'd want solar panels before I build a probe. There's no point in sending a probe over there that can scan for about 10 minutes and then die. So, um, yeah. Okay, let's, um, um, what shall we do now? Yes, let's, uh, let's get more science, shall we? Um, do, come on, pod. I um, don't really want to launch anything again, I think. Although I could. I quite happily could. Um, where am I going? Science. There we go. Um, in fact, let's just load up that other vessel. Let's load up our default vessel, like so. Um, and uh, realise that I'm loading it from the wrong place. Load it from the space plane hangar, because that's the updated version of it. Where is it? There it is. Um, and we want to, quite simply, think under the heat shield, put in that. Ooh, um, yeah. yeah, I think that's kind of what we want to do. Um, obviously, making history does have all these pods and things with it as well. Uh, but I think there's still only a one-seater. Yeah, so... Yeah. Well, what we'll do is we will um, uh, obviously bring this episode to an end in just a moment. But 
I am going to bring Bob with us for this flight. Um, and it's going to be a small flight. But we're going to have the small booster. Uh, save and launch. Um, okay, and we got a pressure scan and material study. Um, yep, and if we take that, it will become inoperable. And yes, Kerbalism Science Inoperable. That's a broken syntax there. Okay, and of course, Bob can restore that experiment. Um, and somehow get an EVA report as well. Even though that covers us with no. Um, right, Bob doesn't have any SAS, so we'd have to fly this manually. I'm just going to go over and land in the water with him. I hope. And yes, that's okay. Quite easy to control. Um, we'll ditch that off already. And um, ah, we can take a material study of the while here, which is what we want. We can't EVA whilst uh, not on the ground. We don't have the upgrade for the astronaut complex for that. But of course, once we're down, Bob can then get out and reset this experiment. I'll launch that a little bit earlier because obviously this is quite heavy. Uh, I don't know why I brought the sheet shield if I'm honest with you. I'm not quite sure on that one. Probably just some extra weight I don't need. I can jettison it, I know that, but I'm kind of wanting to save a bit of money here. Uh, I do have stage recovery installed obviously so we don't have to worry about um, losing stages before I put enough parachutes and things on them. Um, although I do believe um, yeah, that's slowing me down enough, or... Yeah, we're under 10 meters a second, that's fine. Um, I do believe with stage recovery as well, if you leave enough fuel in a booster, it will count that fuel as landing fuel and figure out whether you can hard land, soft land, whatever they call it, um, a booster. So I might have to play with that. I might have to play with actually trying to do that. Um, I would love to be able to do it myself to try and do exactly what SpaceX does, send boosters up and then bring them back and land them manually. But uh, KSP doesn't let you switch between the two as you're going. So um, I do think there is a mod that lets you do that, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, let's uh, pop down here nice and gently, hopefully into the water without losing anything. Yeah, we're fine. And fall over on your back. Yep, that's fine. So we get a pressure scan wash in the water. Bob can EVA and restore that again. And then we can get a material study as well whilst in the water. Very, very efficient. Okay, um, and again, signal lost, signal returned. How strange. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, I think that's about it. I shall do the same with uh, Bill on the wrong way as well to get Bill a bit of experience as well and um, uh, I might also run around the KSC and try and get a little bit more science between this episode and episode 2 because it is just going to be on foot running around getting bits and pieces unless we can unlock wheels which we can't do yet but um, yeah but anyway uh, that is it for episode one. So um, I do hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, I know I'm excited to be back and we're going to get onto wonderful shenanigans and uh, see what happens. Um, do let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see me do or try or try something different to do with it because um, it's much more fun when it's interactable, when I can speak to you and you can let me know what I'm doing, what I'm doing wrong, because let's face it, I do things wrong a lot, but um, it's always fun. But yeah, uh, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, and on that note, yes, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope to see you again next time. And until then, as always, have fun.